This over here is a mini PC with some impressive specs. Ryzen 8845HS, which is very, very powerful. But the thing is, how does it compare to something like this? The Apple M4 Mac Mini, the base model. Because once Apple released these, the mini PC market is kind of in trouble. That doesn't mean that this guy here is withholding any punches. There's a lot of things how this is actually better. Which one is right for you? What's the actual performance difference? Well, you're in the right place. Let's find out. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt P16, the ultimate creator laptop that doesn't just look good, but lets you bring the workstation performance anywhere. Professional 16-inch 4K OLED display, AMD Ryzen 9 AI CPU, and NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU, and that's just the beginning. Go check out our whole playlist about this device and the full overview in the video description below. Thanks Asus ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. Now I want to start with the pricing and I highly recommend checking out the latest pricing in the video description below. Don't buy this from Apple's main website. Through my link, it is actually cheaper. If you're thinking of buying the base model, just don't go to Apple because it's more expensive, okay? Apple never gives you a discount, whereas Amazon does. Go check it out in there. And I believe you can get it 100 or sometimes even $150 cheaper, which is huge discount compared to the Apple's main site. This guy here, different pricing but it can be a little bit more expensive depending if you go with the bare bones version or non bare bones version i've actually tested both of these and you can see both of them are here already set up lined on top of each other i want to jump in one of the main things about these two mini pcs which is power per watt check this out this over here is our mini pc and if we're gonna open hardware info so we can check how much is the package actually pulling power then in here we can see package cpu package power draw okay we're idling the cpu is pulling roughly about five four watts at idle and i've already actually completed the test in cinebench r24 for example to see how good it is but if i'm gonna press multi-core test here and we're gonna go back into here you can see that the CPU package, we are at about 40 watts, 41 watts, 45 watts, and we're roughly pulling about 45 watts CPU package. Now, we're going to do exactly the same thing at our M4 Mac Mini. We're going to press start on there, and we open our power gadget here. We can see that the package we're pulling on the M4, roughly around 20 to 21 watts. So between these two, the devices, the Mac Mini is pulling half the power, which is ridiculous. Now, it's even more ridiculous when we look at the actual results. You can see our Mac Mini doesn't make any noise. The fans that I'm hearing are coming from the Mini PC because obviously there's a lot more heat being distributed, double the wattage, 45 to 22. Now, that is the multi-core. If I'm going to stop the multi-core and start the single core, we can see that the single core on the M4 is pulling roughly about five watts package power drop. Let's do the same on our Ryzen 8845HS. So here now we're doing the single core test and the package power is about 22, 23, somewhere around, just over 20 watts, which means that our power draw is four times higher in single core score, but twice as high in multi core score. But what do these results mean? Now, after the test is complete, what are the actual results? What we're we talking about here? So looking at Cinebench R24, we can see that the 8845HS with this Mac Stand Mini PC is 41% slower in the single core score and about 11.5% slower in the multi-core score. Bear in mind the power difference is on M4's favor. So if you calculate the performance per watt, then the 8845HS is got only 4.95 points per watt on the single core score, which is 86.2% slower. In other words, the M4 is more than seven times more powerful per watt, which is an obliteration to the x86 on Windows side. Then on the multi-core side, the 8845HS gets 19.1 points per watt, meaning it's about 60% slower than the M4. In other words, the M4 is more than double the performance per single watt. It's, it's not 
like 30% faster. It's 200% faster. It's ridiculous. You literally get just twice the performance per single watt at minimum. But the worst case it is, you're getting seven times per the performance for the same power consumption on CPU performance alone. Let's look at some of the other things. The Blender CPU, for example, we can see that the 8845H is about 9.7 to 21% slower in the monster junction and classroom scenes, depending on the scene, which is on CPU side, quite a big win on Apple. What about the GPU side? And here it gets even worse. The M4 with its graphics cards is a lot better at Blender than the AMD Radeon that's inside our Maxtang mini PC. We're about 70 to 75% slower on there, which is ridiculous. More than three times the performance on the M4 in all of these results. Again, the Windows gets an absolute obliteration and a big L. In browser test speedometer 3.0, we are again, half the speed on the Windows side, 48% slower. That looks embarrassing. Unfortunately, in Redshift, the mini PC actually doesn't support Redshift in there, even though Radeon Graphics is supported, but the integrated Radeon Graphics aren't supported on Redshift, so we're not getting any results in there. Geekbench 6, our single core performance is 23% slower on the Windows side and about 20% on the multi-core side. And then the Geekbench iGPU is about 21 to 40% slower in the OpenCL or Metal Vulcan scores, which again, in every single way I'm testing this, the Mac mini is winning. So you're thinking, why on earth should I buy this mini PC? Because it's more expensive, and you know, what do I get with it? Well, you do get a little bit more RAM, you get more storage and you get upgradability, which right now is not supported on the Apple side. Now, another thing worth mentioning is that the actual power supply is inside this here. So you can see that our Mac mini is actually smaller, feels a lot better quality. And this power brick that comes with the Windows PC is actually inside this Apple mini PC. So it is a lot smaller. All you have is this cable that goes directly to the wall, no external brick. If we are looking at the ports on the back, well, that's where the Windows side actually is a little bit better. As you can see, we've got LAN ports. On Windows, we have 2.5 gig. On Apple, we have one gig, but you can upgrade it to 10 gig. There is a day option for that, but it's gonna cost you extra $100, but it is worth it because if you ever want to do this later, upgrade it through some Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit ethernet, it's gonna be a lot more expensive than paying it out front. So maybe you need to do that. Then we've got three Thunderbolt 4 ports in the back and the mini PC has one USB type C, which I believe is USB 4. And then there's another one in the front there as well, which is two USB 4 ports. So the Mac has three. In terms of video output ports, the mini PC has display port and HDMI where there's only HDMI on the Mac mini. There is a Kensington lock for that there as well, but the Mac mini interestingly doesn't have Kensington. In front of the PC, the Mac mini has two USB type C ports and they're just 10 gigabits in speed. They're not Thunderbolt 4, but on the mini PC, we have two USB type A ports and one type C, which I believe is 40 gigabits in speed and then mic and headphone combo jack, which is also there for the Mac mini. In terms of ports, unless you need Thunderbolt 4 and the expandability, the mini PC has better options there from the get-go without any expansion possible. But if you need it expanding, I think Thunderbolt 4 has better expandability there compared to the USB 4. Now, Mac mini is actually upgradable potentially because if you've seen some of the teardowns online, you can see that this has a slot in the ball, <laughs> slot in the ball. There is a removable SSD little chip that potentially at some point can be upgraded, but this mini PC should be upgradable. So if I take these rubber feet off, you can see that there are screws underneath. Opening up the Mac, if you see the teardowns online, isn't as simple as this in here. The back cover comes off and what can we see inside? Now, here's the good news. What we have here is the OS SSD and it's got a heatsink on and then this is very easily upgradable and changeable. You can easily do whatever with this. On this side, we have upgradable RAM and this is 32 gigabytes of DDR5, 5600 mega transfers per second from Crucial, but you can upgrade this to 96 gigabytes 
by just these so dim slats and that's so easy just four screws open up put it in ram upgradability not possible with this mac mini now what else you can see here is a wi-fi and bluetooth card so if you do need your wi-fi upgraded to wi-fi 7 8 or whatever it's going to come out you can do that it's upgradable on apple you're stuck with what you purchased there is also a secondary m.2 slot which is also free and i believe that's also pci gen 4 x4 slot meaning you get full bandwidth for very fast storage now on the other side is the cooler and it does a good job it's very very light you don't really need to go on the other side because the cooling is adequate it never throttles so you don't need to check it i do wish it was a little bit of a better quality fan maybe a little bit bigger so it makes less noise because it's a lot more noisier than the mac mini now here's the thing amd and intel have kind of taken it easy and have pushed apple into a place where they can make a product that's cheaper better more power efficient and higher quality at the lower price point which is absolutely insane to me in essence there's nothing better about it let me know and please prove me wrong in the comment section below for the same price if you're looking to build yourself the best bang for buck creator pc or check out some of the other videos about this mac mini there's plenty of them available on the channel but i highly recommend checking out the video description where you can see some pc build guides where you can build yourself an absolute beast for around $750 all the way up to $5,000. If you're interested in that, there's free build guides in the video description below. Bye-bye.